Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. Today, I will explain about rectifiers. In power electronics, rectifiers are used to convert AC power to DC power. In order to understand how power can be converted, we need to refer to the characteristics of electric current in AC and DC system. In the AC system, current flows in two directions. Since the polarity of the AC system changes from positive to negative and vice versa, therefore current can flow in a forward direction and reverse direction alternately. However, in the DC system, current flows in one direction only. It is because the polarity of the DC system keep constant all the time. This current can only flow in a forward direction. In order to convert AC power to DC power, the rectifier needs to convert forward and reverse directions of the AC current to be forward direction current. To do so, the rectifier needs semiconductor power devices or power switches to control the current flow. Rectifiers can be classified based on three criteria. First, it is based on the AC sources connected to the rectifiers. According to the grid power system, we can classify the rectifiers as single phase or three phase rectifiers. Second, it is based on the power switches used in constructing the rectifiers. If the rectifiers are constructed using diodes, then we call them as uncontrolled rectifiers. Meanwhile, if they are constructed using controllable power switches, such as thyristors or IGBTs, then we call them as fully controlled rectifiers. However, if you are using a mixture between diodes and controllable power switches, then we call the rectifiers as half controlled rectifiers. Lastly, we can classify the rectifiers based on their operation. If the rectifiers are only capable to rectify the positive half cycle of the AC supply voltage waveform, then we call the rectifiers as half wave rectifiers. On the other hand, if the rectifiers are capable to rectify both positive and negative half cycles of the AC supply voltage waveform, then we call the rectifiers as full wave rectifiers. In the next explanation, I will focus on the circuit topology of single phase uncontrolled rectifiers only. Figure 1 and Figure 2 show the circuit topology of single phase uncontrolled half wave and full wave rectifiers respectively. Based on the figures, we can see that the half wave and full wave rectifiers are using a different number of diodes. This situation can be explained using a single phase AC supply voltage waveform. Figure 3 show a complete cycle of the AC supply voltage waveform. Based on the figure, we can see that the waveform consists of one positive half cycle plus one negative half cycle. Since the half wave rectifier is designed to rectify only the positive half cycle of the AC supply voltage waveform, therefore, we only need a single diode to connect the AC source to the DC load. On the other hand, 
the full wave rectifier is designed to rectify both positive and negative half cycle of the AC supply voltage level. Because of that, we need at least two diodes to construct the full wave rectifier circuit. However, in order to perform full wave rectification, the rectifier must be connected to the AC supply through a single phase center tap transformer. The center tap transformer will split the input supply into two AC sources. Then the full wave rectification can be conducted. This topology is known as a single phase uncontrolled full wave rectifier with center tap transformer. If you want to remove the center tap transformer, then you can remove it by adding another two diodes. Therefore, in total, we have four diodes. And this circuit topology is called bridge rectifier. And as similar as the half wave rectifier, all these diodes will connect the AC sources to the DC loads. Before I continue my explanation on the principal operation of single phase uncontrolled rectifiers, I would like to share my tips to sketch a bridge rectifier quickly. If you look on the circuit topology of the rectifier, you can see that the circuit consists of two frames. By imagining the window of the classroom, you can start your sketch by drawing a large square window. Next, split the window into two frames. On the left frame, you need to add four diodes, two at the top, and another two at the bottom. Then we label all the diodes according to their pairing. I will explain later about the pairing when we discuss about the principal operation of the bridge rectifier. Next, you need to focus on these connection points where based on these two points, you can see that actually this AC source is connected at the middle of the frames. So you can add the AC source here. Once again, don't forget the level. Show the polarity for the supply voltage. And based on the positive polarity, you label the supply current. Here you can see that actually the AC source acts as the bridge between the first and the second legs of the rectifier circuit. Lastly, on the third leg, you need to add the DC load. You can add the resistive load, a resistive load, or an inductive load. You need to label the output current first. And based on the output current direction, you can determine the polarity of the output voltage. For future analysis, I prefer to use this circuit topology instead of this circuit topology. 
Now, I will explain the last topic for this video, which is the principal operation of single phase and controlled half wave and full wave rectifiers. As mentioned before, a rectifier converts AC power to DC power by controlling the current flow using power switches. In the context of the uncontrolled rectifiers, we need to focus on the operating conditions of the diodes. However, we must assume all the diodes are ideal. Figure 4 shows voltage and current waveforms of an ideal diode. Based on the figure, we can see that the diode can work in two operating conditions, forward bias and reverse bias. These two operating conditions depends on the current flow towards the diode. If current flow to the anode terminal, the diode is in forward bias. In this condition, the diode will act as a short circuit to conduct a very large current from the source to the load with zero voltage drop. Nevertheless, when current flow to the cathode terminal, the diode is in reverse bias. In this situation, the diode will act as an open circuit to stop current flow by blocking a large reverse voltage. As a result, we can see in figure 4 that we only have a current waveform during forward bias and voltage waveform during reverse bias of the diode. As the direction of current flow depends on the polarity of a voltage source, it's better to explain the principal operation of the rectifiers based on the waveform of a single phase AC supply voltage. During the positive half cycle, diode D in the half wave rectifier is in forward bias. Hence, it creates a closed loop circuit to conduct current from the source to the load. Meanwhile, in the bridge rectifier, diode D1 and D2 are in forward bias. Thus, current can flow from the source to the load. Here we can see the bridge rectifier requires a pair of diodes to conduct the current. On the other hand, in the speed supply rectifier, only diode D1 is in forward bias. Hence, current will flow from the source to the load. Next, when the half cycle of the AC supply voltage waveform is negative, diode D in the half wave rectifier is in reverse bias. As a result, it creates an open loop circuit and therefore current cannot flow to the load anymore. Nevertheless, in the full wave rectifiers, current is still flowing to the load. It is because in the bridge rectifier, diode D3 and D4 are in forward bias, while in the split supply rectifier, diode D2 is in forward bias. That's all for today and I will see you again in the next video.